Um, biographies aren't the only thing. You, you take the writings of Livy, one of the great Roman historians. It's anonymous. All extant manuscripts of Livy's writings have Livy claiming authorship. Mike thinks that by removing the author claiming authorship, that makes them anonymous. That's not how any of this works, Mike. It just makes you look deceptive. You can take the writings of Sallust, whom the famous Roman rhetorician Quintilian said was a better historian than Livy and that you had to be advanced in your studies to appreciate him properly. All of Sallust's writings are uh, anonymous. And the same with Sallust. He removes the part where the author claims authorship, which is extant in all of our manuscripts, and then presents it as anonymous. Hey, Caesar's um, commentary on the Civil War. Um, they're not only uh, anonymous, Caesar wrote them, but it, it's anonymous and it's written entirely in the third person, much like the Gospel of John is. You know, this is not true either. All existing manuscripts start with Gaius Caesar claiming authorship. Again, he removes something that has always been part of the manuscript in order to force it to be anonymous. Uh, Plutarch is regarded as the greatest ancient biographer by classicists today. Um, he wrote over 60 biographies of which 48 have survived. None of them have Plutarch's name in the preface, in the proem, or the title, the preface, the proem, or anywhere throughout them. They're anonymous in the same sense the Gospels are. Yet again, Mike ignores the fact that Plutarch's biographies start with Plutarch claiming authorship. If you continue to just remove the author's claim of authorship from any work out there, then every single thing ever written is anonymous. All of Mike's books are written anonymously. If you remove any indication that Mike wrote the book. Mike's just being really ridiculous at this point, and he shows what little value he has as a historian. We have, for the traditional authorship of the Gospels, it's not unimpeachable by any means, but the, tra the our evidence we have for Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John being the traditional authors is superior to the evidence we have that Plutarch wrote those lives, the biographies attributed to him. And yet you'd be hard pressed to find a classicist today who uh, questions whether Plutarch wrote those. Oh man, well, you would be hard pressed to find any classicist that would doubt that Plutarch wrote his biographies, mainly because Plutarch's name is on the fucking manuscripts. Considering that the Gospels didn't originally have any authorship claims, they simply cannot have superior evidence for their authorship than the author's name being directly on the manuscript. In fact, the way that the Gospels are titled indicates sources, not authorship. The Greek word kata used in the titles is a dead giveaway for this. But let's take a look at what the evidence is for the authorship of the Gospels that he's talking about. The earliest known indication of who wrote at least some of the Gospels is Papias. Papias was writing between 110 and 140 CE. Papias also notoriously reported third and fourth hand information that weren't true. He talks about a group called the Elders that appear nowhere else in history. He claims that these elders communicated to him that John Mark wrote Mark. And then separately, without any indication as to how he came about this information, he claims that Matthew Levi wrote Matthew. Although the Matthew that Papias talks about is not our Matthew. Papias claimed that Matthew's gospel was just a collection of Jesus' sayings, but that's not what our Matthew is. He also claimed that Matthew was originally written in Hebrew, which it wasn't. It was written in Greek. As for Mark, he tells us that John Mark wrote down everything that Peter said about Jesus, but considering that Mark's the short gospel and only takes about two hours to read aloud, it seems like this wouldn't be everything that Peter said about Jesus. Another thing to consider is that everything that Papias records is rejected by the same consensus that Mike and Gary rely on. For instance, one thing that Papias records is that after betraying Jesus, Judas bloated to the width of a street and then exploded. Obviously, the one true thing that Papias wrote about was the authorship of Mark and Matthew that he either completely made up or he got from these mysterious elders that nobody hears about elsewhere. Now, moving off of Papias, the first time that we get a full list of Gospels comes from Irenaeus in 180 CE. 
obviously, by the end of the second century, there would be no way to tell if these claims were true or not. What it does indicate is that by this time in Christian history, having historically grounded Gospels of Jesus was important to the Christian community. Since the Gospels were originally anonymous, they just made up authors that seemed like they would be historically connected to Jesus. Another thing to consider is that none of the Gospels read as if they were eyewitness accounts, nor do they even claim to be eyewitness accounts. Both of the Gospels, supposedly written by Jesus' disciples, Matthew and John, do not indicate that they were eyewitnesses when they should have if they wrote them. Matthew's Gospel speaks in the third person, which is not how you would normally write an eyewitness account. The Gospel of John blatantly says at the very end of the Gospel that the beloved disciple was the source of the information, not the author. Also, how could both of these Gospels really be talking about the same guy? They are radically different in many ways. I mean, Matthew has Jesus being born of a virgin, while John has Jesus pre-existing the universe and even being used to create the universe. Matthew doesn't have Jesus claiming to be God, but in John, that is Jesus' primary message. In Matthew, Jesus refuses to do miracles to prove his identity, but in John, that seems to be the primary way that Jesus proves his identity. They are just so radically different that it's hard to say that these are just two different perspectives of the same events. Additionally, it's quite ridiculous to think that anybody close to Jesus would have written any gospel. The gospels are written in a sophisticated Greek. Whoever wrote the gospels were not poor, illiterate, Aramaic-speaking peasant people in the first century, which is who the disciples and anybody connected to Jesus would have been. Only about 10% of the Roman population were literate. This 10% would have been upper-class citizens who could afford to learn to read and write which were considered two different skills at the time. When pressed on the issue of defending the authorship of Mark's gospel, Michael Icona responds by just appealing to authority. 